हेलो आई एम डॉक्टर ओपी तिवारी फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज श्रीगंगानगर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एज इन विच थॉमस हार्डी लिव्ड एंड सी हाउ फार द एज इन्फ्लुएंस्ड हिम इन फैक्ट इट इज वेरी एसेंशियल टू स्टडी द एज इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड अ राइटर द एज इन विच थॉमस हार्डी लिव्ड was an age of change and transition the first jubilee of queen victoria in 1887 denoted the end of the age of tennyson after the death of tennyson in 1893 england had no great personality to interpret the sentiments of britain some definite changes were taking place in the contemporary minds tennyson saw grand simplicity and unity of purpose in the creation but now it was realized that the things were not so simple according to hudson the whole the old hope in the ultimate discovery of one universal truth gave place to the disturbing contemplation of an endless series of competing truths dogma was dead with this change of outlook the apparently solid foundation which had sustained the victorian age began to crumble and the cause lay as much in certain defects in the 19th century popular idealism as in the impatience of the new generations this age was an age of transition when the old values were disappearing while the new ones were not appearing it was also an age of the progress of science the age of thomas hardy saw the rapid development of science and technology in every walk of life these new developments were appearing this brought many changes in the industrial towns where the agriculture labor was going because of temptation of new jobs but these simple village folk got nothing else but misery and unhappiness in these towns in fact it was an era of ruin of agriculture the downfall of agriculture was caused by the rapid growth of industries and free trade disraeli who later became the prime minister of england prophesied the ruin of agriculture resulting from free trade in 1846 Ryder Haggard a social historian of the times writes that free trade has filled the towns and emptied our countryside it has gorged the banks but left our rickyards bare so it is impossible to take a favorable view of the present prospects of the land or of any class connected with it in dorsetshire and coat though the farmers attained prosperity between 1850 and 1870 the laborers wages did not rise the decline of agriculture still continued because of the imports of cheap food in fact there was a large scale exodus of the agricultural workers in that age the railway trains brought the towns nearer to the villages the agricultural workers were tempted by higher wages in the industry this brought about the exodus of the laborers thousands of these workers went into the towns and joined the general labor group now the english countryside 
presented the unhappy sights of disaster, crumbled buildings, collapsed fences, decayed roads and abandoned farmhouses. Even the towns uh, did not have the beds of roses. There also these poor laborers had to face disease, difficulties and unemployment and insecurity rose uh, than any in the countryside. At that time, the only chance for a young and enterprising person in the countryside was to leave it and then uprooted he found in the town's casual labor or none, disappointment and an old age of poverty. Thus it was the age of the disease of peasantry and the collapse of agriculture. <coughs> Thomas Hardy witnessed all the changes in human life very carefully. This experience provided him with the subject matter for his novels and poems. He was profoundly affected by the change in the agricultural setup. Hardy's novels and poems got the substance from this situation. All his novels were composed during the 25 years of rural collapse and misery. It is the agricultural tragedy that has given material and strength to Hardy's narrative art. He roamed in the Dorset countryside at the time of writing of tests of the tea over wills and felt miserable and unhappy when he saw the abandoned farmhouses and crumbled buildings. Douglas Brown has pointed out not only Tess and Jude, but each of the great Wessex novels treats in imaginative form of the disease of our peasantry and the collapse of our agriculture. His continual theme is the tragedy of exodus of the agricultural workers from the countryside. In his novels, he tries to celebrate the naturalness of men and women engaged in the skills and necessities of agriculture. He tries to establish his belief of the potential value of the agricultural life through his characters Oak, Winterborn, Henshard and Tess. Thank you.